For the last 11 months, I've been on the road with a band called The Academy Is. I've seen them coast to coast and around the world, and nothing has intrigued me more than the man, the myth, Mike Carden. Tonight, I'd like to show you just a little piece of what I've been working on, a documentary called The Chronicles of Mike Carden. Seeing over a hundred shows by the Academy is this year, I realized that there was one undeniable factor that made each and every show spectacular. That factor had to be the backup vocals of one Mike Carter. I asked around to see if other people had similar opinions on the matter, and this is what I discovered. Like, what do you say about Mike Carden that hasn't already been said? The singing voice, the stage presence, his guitar rock. You know what I'm talking about. What song is he singing? I mean, honestly, the guy is, is unbelievable. He's taught me, personally, everything I know. And it's like, you know, the best teachers, they don't really even teach, you know? You just gotta just hang around them, be around them, pick up on their vibe, get their energy, and, and just try to, to imitate what they do, you know? I see this guy warming up every day, just for hours on end. I would like to use the bathroom. This century. Practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. And that's really what Mike Carden embodies. Perfection. As a singer. Yeah, Mike Carden, dude. To be honest, like... He's like a legend in my book, you know? It's like... I watch him every night when he sings and I basically just take notes, you know? When we found out we were doing this tour, that was probably single-handedly the, the coolest thing about it for me, you know? I was going to get to take some notes, you know? When you tour with the best, you learn from the best, you know? Mike Card, God, as a, as a backup vocalist, you know? And he gets up there and he says, take back. Right. Or intoxicated circulation. Right. And that's it. It's like Clint Eastwood. He doesn't say much, but what he says, it's impactive. It hits you. He's got a beautiful voice and a beautiful face. So Mike, Mike Carden, I just put his fader up and there it is. It sounds brilliant. I think it's due to, you know, all day long really, he, he prepares himself, he warms up, and, uh, you know, I really think it, it pays off in the end for him. Could these first-hand testimonials really hold any truth? I'd seen band and crew member alike trying to unlock the mysteries of what was going on with Mike Carden, but I was still not convinced. I needed to look deeper. I've been in this business for a long time, and I've done lights for many amazing acts, but there's nothing that has inspired me more to bring my A-game than the voice of Mike Carden. How could one man be regarded with such awe and devotion? How does one unravel such a tightly wrapped riddle? Sometimes, during soundcheck, when people are just kind of, you know, not paying attention and I'm done with the butcher stuff, I'll just kind of go up to this microphone and smell it, and caress it, just kind of, you know, get as close to Mike Carden's talent level as I can without actually touching Mike Carden. I don't know, don't, don't tell anybody. So most people don't know this, but I sing about 80% of the backup vocals when we play. But when Mike Carden steps up to the mic, I know my place, and I just back off, because he, as we all know, has the best voice. Where was he always running off to? Why was he so secretive about his ways? As my investigation rolled on, I came across one who had given up all hope of finding an answer. Bill, Bill, what can you say about Mike's vocal warm-up? You got a second? I have no comment about that. Downtrodden and discouraged by the mixed messages I was receiving, I decided to go straight to the source. So, Mike, I, uh, thanks for taking the time to sit down with me for a second. Um, yeah. Could you answer a couple questions for me real fast? Yeah, what about? Uh, I've been working on this piece for a long time now. What you piece? Know. 
uh, it's a piece about your your great vocal warm up. You know your great vocals that you bring to the to the show. I was my, just my backups, my backups, your backup my two backups. Yeah, I was just wondering if you could verify that you know some of the information that I've uh, that I've gotten. Yeah, I mean, Jack, I sing two parts. I sing Slow Down, and then I sing Intoxicated Circulation and Neighbors. Well, I made this, I mean, did you see I made that pie chart that has, that has all your, you know, the percentages of everything and things like that, you know, some cold hard facts. I mean, how am I supposed to Yeah, I mean, I, I figured you'd make a pie chart, you know. I figured you'd make a pie chart. I, I don't know why you'd make a pie chart. Do you do you think you have a, a great voice? Do you think you your voice is is one of the main parts of the show? Yeah, I mean it's it's. I mean everything's a main part. I mean. So you're saying you're kind of like, the fluff on top of uh, yams on Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, when you eat it with all your friends. It's tasty. Sure. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for all your help. Awesome. And uh, happy Thanksgiving, Jack. Looking back on my experience making this documentary, I guess I realized a few things. Maybe the fluff is more fun than the facts. Maybe I tried too hard to find an answer that didn't really exist. Maybe I should go back to college. I guess in the end, this is just part one of the Mike Carter Chronicles. Thank you.